Hi guys, it's Archon Mano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. I am so excited to be doing this video today. I've been waiting to do it for a while. I am here to talk to you today about a brand I discovered last year and have kind of been falling a little bit deeper in love with them as time has gone past. And um, yeah, it's Ruth Marstenbrook, English brand, family brand, Ruth Marstenbrook London representing for the UK. I always love to represent, not represent, or just support smaller brands from my hometown. It's homegrown. So uh, yeah, little quick story. So just before I start telling you about the brand, uh, there's only five in the line, which is great. It, they're, they're not a huge line. Ruth really does nurture her fragrances and she really, she can, alter them 200 times or more to get them perfect so she's got 30 or 40 years in the perfume industry and I basically I was sniffing with a friend I went on a, a sniffing day I actually recorded it so I'll link it at the end and I spotted this brand I was attracted to the whimsical beautiful packaging the way the bottles looked and I randomly picked just one of them up and sprayed it and let me tell you I smelled probably about 150 perfumes that day and this one was the standout it was Ruth Marston Brooks signature which is the first one in the line so I'll start with that one but about the brand family owned um, Ruth grew up in America she did start out her journey I think making fragrances for other brands but then she decided that she wanted to make her own line to kind of not be restricted creatively and just to be a bit more free and that's what signature is about so I'm gonna start with that one but before that, I, I reached out to the brand and I said, hey, I, I really like the two fragrances of yours that I've tried. I'm so intrigued to try the rest. Would it be okay if I did a video? And I've been speaking to Ruth's son, Nick. So Nick, thank you so much for liaising with me and um, being so kind and generous and letting me try these because it's not often that I get something sparks like that with the brand instantly. So I was really happy to get these. Let's start. So the first one came out 2010, 19 years ago, or 18 years ago, I'm not good at maths. And it's called Signature. It is about freedom. This is Ruth's first fragrance. It was about her becoming free and being able to create something that she really wanted to create. It draws inspiration from many parts of her life, her home in America, uh, I think other places she's lived and there's something about this this fragrance that really strikes a deep-seated olfactory memory for me. I don't know what it is, I don't know where it came from, but this is actually the one that I have. I have the bottle of this one. So the bottles look like this, they do come in 100 mils as well. And this represents, it's like a window into a scene or a memory or a monumental moment in Ruth's life. And she says that every drop contains a story so that's why it's like a drop it's like a drop of fragrance and this one's got a lady on a swing with clouds and it's just really pretty <laughs> so yeah let me tell you about the fragrance so the notes are bergamot pineapple blackcurrant pink peppercorn and mandarin heart notes are rose jasmine and lily and the base notes are patchouli oak moss sandalwood and it's a sheep fragrance i'm gonna i've worn this so many times but i'm gonna I'm gonna put it on my skin because every time I smell it, I get this rush of excitement, I don't know. So, it's so unique and this one, I think is my favorite, but I'll get onto the others in a minute. <laughs> this one is, um, to me it's kind of syrupy. You can feel pineapple in here. You, I can feel mandarin quite a lot and it's very woody and it feels, like something from the past. It feels like something from my childhood. It feels like a very elegant, rich, fruity fragrance that isn't, you know, just a boring fruity fragrance with, you know, just strawberry and vanilla and stuff like that. It's, it feels so high class and when you wear this, I can feel it all the time. There is no doubt, I mean, I should go on to say, 
one of the main things about this brand is the quality of them. They are all, you can feel the materials, you can feel how much beautiful oils are in here, like the level of them as opposed to just using like not very good ingredients. When I do spotlights like this usually, it's usually a first impressions thing. And there have been some brands where I've thought, oh gosh, I'm not sure if I like them, but these ones I've worn and I just can't wait to shout about them to you. <laughs> just cannot wait. So a signature I wore to my friend's wedding. Just wanted to tell you that I wore this to my friend's wedding in August. I sprayed this on at 11 while I was getting ready. We partied until four o'clock in the morning, the next morning, and I could still smell it. So everyone nowadays is obsessed with longevity. How long does it last? How long does it last? Will it last long on me? Does it last longer than four hours? I mean, with these, just yes across the board. There's not much else I can say about that. The floral part of this fragrance is the part that's the trickiest to describe. Jasmine, Rose and Lily doesn't feel like any of those to me. It's almost like Ruth has created this, maybe an accord out of these three flowers that feels like something else entirely. And that is perfume magic to me. That's like a painter mixing yellow and blue to get green. It's just, it's rich and woody and syrupy and it's, extremely difficult to describe. It's one of those, you'd kind of got to wear it to, to really feel what it's about, but it feels almost like an 80s perfume, but without any of the obnoxiousness that some 80s perfumes had. It's so refined. It just gives me such pleasure when I wear it. And I already want to get a big, bigger bottle of this because I know that I'm going to use this. I've been spraying this on quite a lot and I only got it recently. So that's the first one. It's called Signature. It was the first one I smelled randomly in the shop, which leads me on to tell you another quick story. <laughs> I hope you're here for the long run. I was digging through my sample box, um, I don't know, a few weeks ago or a month or two ago, I would say, and I randomly pulled out a sample that said Ruth Marstenbrook on it. And I said, oh, this brand is following me around because I hadn't stopped thinking about Signature for a while. I sprayed it on me and because my memory of smelling Signature was quite loose because I smelled so many perfumes that day, I thought that the one I was smelling was Signature. It wasn't. It turns out it was Amarosa, which led me on to swap with somebody in my fragrance community for a bottle of Signature. And when I got it, I went, ah, that's the first one I tried. This one I love, I think maybe even more Amarosa. So this one is extremely special to me. Um, another one that creates deep-seated olfactory joy for me. This is a tuberose. And I'm gonna say something here. This is my favorite fragrance I've ever smelled that has tuberose in it. There, I said it. I can't go back now. It's a done, done and dusted. So this one's about love. This one's about a woman in love. And the notes of this one are watermelon, violet leaf, galbanum. Heart notes are ylang ylang and tuberose. No wonder I love it so much. Base notes are amber and vetiver. And Ruth describes this as a white floral, white flower, white floral, because, you know, tuberose. But when I spray this on card, I can feel watermelon more. It doesn't smell like that on skin, which I'm thankful for. But this one is, I don't want anyone to take offense here, but there, this is, I'm gonna have to say this carefully. When I was younger, I was obsessed with the smell of Pantene conditioner in the 90s. I don't know what's going on in this fragrance to make me feel or think of that, but to me, it smells like Pantene conditioner. And that is no detriment to Ruth. I'm not saying that this perfume smells like conditioner, but it's my olfactory memory and my, my imagination that takes me to that place. But other than that, tuberose in here is so, so beautiful. It's not a green one. It's not really kind of indolic or strange. It's a very, very smooth one. This isn't a sweet fragrance to me either. It's got a touch powderiness, a touch of powderiness, should I say. But something takes me to a very clean smelling person place. And I'll say it again, I've, this has overtaken every other tuberose fragrance I've ever smelled. This is why I wanted to shout about this brand because they're doing things to me that I didn't expect. So, super happy. This is, this wafts around you so beautifully. It's kind of creamy. 
there is a fruity element to it, but to me it doesn't feel like watermelon or anything like that. It's more, it, it's just so well blended that it's almost impossible to pick out any of the other notes. I can feel tuberose in here, but it's unlike any tuberose I've smelled. Nothing smells like this on the market. And I've smelled thousands and thousands of fragrances. I make it my business, <laughs> okay? <laughs> It's just unbelievable. I, I just, I want to wear this one today. Um, and I might wear it on Christmas Day as well. But if you like clean white florals that have, there's a nice backbone to this. Um, it just wears astonishingly beautifully. And I'm a big fan. I can't decide between Signature and this one, which is my favorite. It's like a battle that's going on in my head every day. So I love this one. So the next one is called Oxford. The little window here is someone sitting under a tree on a riverbank. And this one signifies Ruth's time when she studied at Oxford. It's about discovery. It was a time of new beginnings, new friends, new just adventures basically. So this one to me is, let me tell you the notes first actually, sorry. I know it's so bad to have my phone, but I don't have that good a memory. This is uh, Galben and Bergamot and Basil. Heart notes, clary, sage, jasmine, rosemary, and lavender. Base notes are amber, vanilla, vetiver, and oud. And if I'm right, it's Cambodian oud. I did actually listen to an interview with Ruth when she released her fire dance fragrance, which is the next one. And she uses Cambodian oud, as far as I can tell. So she describes it as an oriental. To me, I, I'm not sure, this feels really aromatic to me. To my nose, it feels like a fourgette. I mean, I'm not that expert here, Ruth is. <laughs> but I'm just talking from my own experience. I can feel um, greenery, I can feel herbal notes here. And it feels, I guess, a touch masculine, this one. That's why I, I, I say it feels a bit like a fourgette. It's quite open textured, it's almost fizzy bright. And there's uh, some kind of dark woodiness going on underneath, maybe vetiver, but it doesn't feel like vetiver to me. This is the thing, when I look at the note lists of Ruth's fragrances, it's always a surprise what comes out of them. I would say this one's probably my least favourite of the bunch, but that's not a bad thing, it's just my personal style. But yeah, it, it feels a little bit gentlemanly and um, masculine, I would say. I actually put this one on the other day, uh, in the same place here actually, and um, it came through my shirt. I had my shirt over my arm and I could smell it through my shirt. This is what I'm talking about with the quality of these fragrances. If you're one of those people that always worries about, is it going to last, is it going to perform, try these fragrances out, I urge you. So I'm going to move on from Oxford. This one is called Fire Dance, and this is Ruth's Rose, oh my gosh. This one is kind of spectacular. If, you, if you're a rose lover, this is a rose for rose lovers. This one is the rose of the collection, the queen of the flowers. This one has apple and lemon. It has damask rose, so it's a Turkish rose in here. Leather, cashmere. Then it has, the base notes are patchouli and that Cambodian oud again. And wowzers. This is one of those roses that you put on and it just balloons outwards and it's just all around you everywhere. Turkish roses to me are some of the sweetest. To me, they're kind of bouncy and jammy and fluffy all at the same time. Super sweet. And this one has a touch of smokiness at the beginning. Even though it's called Fire Dance, it isn't a super smoky rose. I normally like my roses to be quite dark but this one is leathery as well. It almost feels like it could have maybe birch tar because it's got, I'm guessing that must be the oud, you know, oud is quite a smoky wood. And this is so voluptuous. It's a jammy, explosive rose with something that hints at darkness behind. It's very ambery as well. So you've got this resinous, woody quality underneath and it's so rich and enveloping and one of the nicest roses I've smelled in a very long time as well. You know, there's a million roses out there, but sometimes you catch one and you just say, oh gosh, that's a good one. 
So lovely. I mean, this would be a rose, a statement type of rose for me. One where you would walk into a room and you would just have this cloud of damask rose around you with this hint of darkness and mystery underneath. So this one is so cool as well for a rose. So yeah, absolutely love this one. Super strong, but soft, you know? So strong fragrances don't have to be dark. I love it when a fragrance is actually soft in its tonality and its nature, but you can feel it everywhere. I always say it's like being punched in the face with a pillow. And that's kind of like what this one does. This one was also a fragrance foundation finalist in 2018, and I can see why. Just great. So I'm gonna move on to the last one. This is the newest one. It's just been released actually. It's the fifth one in the line, and it's called, let me pronounce this right, Dajian, Dajian, and it means dawn. And this one is about Ruth's, uh, one, I think one of her holidays to Corfu, and she was on the beach at dawn and just had one of those, you know, one of those moments on holiday that where you just have serenity and I guess just peacefulness. I love those moments when you go on holiday and you just, you know, this is a moment happening right now. So this is about Corfu. The picture on this one is somebody standing on a beach looking at the sky. Something I want to mention about this is why well, it mentions on Ruth's website that, that this one is quite special because every bottle of this that's sold, uh, they donate five pounds to Centrepoint, which is a charity in London that helps homeless people. So important, just wanted to add that in. So what are the notes? So you've got lime, mint and lemon in the opening. The heart is orange blossom and jasmine and the base note is sandalwood. So some of the compositions, you know, on paper, they look simple, but Ruth manages to create magic. And that is how you know she's an amazing perfumer. So let me spray this one on. This one, when I first tried it, I felt differently about it to how I do now. When I first smelled it, I thought, oh, I can smell grapefruit. I thought I was smelling grapefruit, but I wasn't, it's lime. And this is a really strong citrus, very, very strong. and. This definitely has some kind of ozonic type feeling going on in the background. This one stayed on my skin for such a long time as well. So it's reflective of being on a beach. It's a zesty, bright, open fragrance with a gentle woodiness, but the main core of this to me is an aquatic, ozonic, sea spray type of thing. Like that salty air cleanliness type feeling with lots of citruses on the top and it's really pleasant and vibrant and makes me feel uplifted when I smell it and I think maybe that's the point of it. So it kind of perks you up a little bit when you smell this one. It's kind of like a celebration in your nose. It's very, very pleasant. I would wear this on a beach holiday just to add to that feeling of open space and cleanliness and brightness. So. I love this one too. And I'm not really one for aquatics, they're not really my thing. I like orientals more, but yeah. It doesn't feel massively complicated, but what you do smell hits you all at once and it's a kind of mood enhancer, this one. It kind of takes me to another place and I really like that. So I'm gonna leave it there because otherwise I'm gonna gush forever and you guys won't get anything done if you're watching this. So just to recap, um, just there's something special about this brand. I can't put my finger on it. Two of them in particular, Signature and Amorosa, are just, just amazing. I, I just, I can't even describe how or why or how, they, how it happened, but it happened. And it's not often that I get that excited about a brand that quickly. So they're so affordable. The 50 mils are 90 pounds and the 100 mils are 120. For the quality, packaging, the way they perform, the, the way they smell, the way they feel, I think it's just an absolute bargain. I'm not here to try and sell you them. I'm here to tell you about them, but I can't believe that they're priced like that. And the bottles are beautiful, whimsical. They look really nice in your collection if you've got a fragrance collection like me. And um, I'm just thankful that I got to try the whole line and I will be watching this brand very, very closely. Ruth, you're amazing. I love them. I can't wait to see what you do next. Um, and Nick, thank you so much as well for being kind and generous and letting me smell these. 
Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. Check these fragrances out. I'm gonna leave a link to uh, Ruth's website underneath in the description box so you can go and read more about them and read Ruth's story and her inspirations. Um, because, you know, they're from England, so yay for that. <laughs> just extra, extra little special thing there at the end. Anyway guys, I'm out from my nose trying to make the world more better one video at a time. Hope you guys have had a lovely day. I'll see you soon, goodbye. Thank you.